great blessing, isn't it? To sing about the uh, God of love and his kindness and it changes not. Friends, we believe in a God that changes not. And that's uh, such a great blessing for us as we walk this journey of darkness, so perhaps a pathway where we don't know where we will be going. And uh, God, in his great mercy, says in the hymn here uh, how, how he will not forget us and he changes not. It's a great blessing, isn't it? Well, let's look at this psalm, Psalm 54. And here we see uh, immediately God's servant in deep trouble. David, King David, is in trouble and uh, he has had many enemies raise up, rose up against him and uh, uh, the Zep hymns had come out against him and uh, they had told Saul basically where David was hiding. And uh, friends, don't be surprised if your own personal family come out against you because these were the same family of David in a sense. And uh, they, they came out against uh, uh, um, David uh, in a very powerful way. And here he begins a prayer and he says, Save me, O God, by thy name, and judge me by thy strength. That's a good prayer to ha have if you're in trouble tonight and you have those that are against you in some kind of way. Um, pray that prayer. Save me, O God, by thy name. See, there's only one name that we will be saved by and that is the name of Jesus Christ, ultimately. One name will be, be our calling and that will be that Jesus Christ will be our calling. There's no other name that can deliver us from enemies. There's no other name that can deliver us from ourselves. There's no other name that can uh, uh, deliver us from this vileness of our own hearts and lives. There is no other name under heaven but only Jesus' name that can deliver us. And you would lay, learn that, friends, by painful experience. There's one name that will help you in this life. No other name will help. Yes, you may have friends. They may help you in certain directions. But this King, Jesus, is the ultimate helper. And he's to be inquired of and he's to be called upon to help. So when you're in trouble, where do you go? You go to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. He's your only helper and he will be your only helper. You see, you may have many enemies against you even tonight and you may have some things in front of you that are really troubling you and worrying you. David did, didn't he, here. And he says, hear my prayer, O God, give ear to the words of my mouth. You see, he's shedding out his troubles before the Lord. What do you do when you're in trouble? You might be in trouble at school in some kind of way. You might have some enemies in the playground. Where do you take your troubles? Do you fight them with your fists? Or do you take them to the Lord in prayer? Friends, I would advise you to take them to the Lord in prayer. Because he's the great King of kings and Lord of lords. He will sort every battle and judgment is his. He will bring a righteous hand to every decision in your own personal life because he's God. Even actually whether you believe in him or not, he will bring a righteousness into your life and you will know that it is God. He's making judgment for you. We believe in a God that is over everything and above everything. And here King David, he needs this great God of heaven uh, to come and help him. Hear my prayer, O God, give ear to my words. Lord, please listen to me, I'm in desperate straits now. 
I need your help, O Lord. You might feel like that. You might have some certain circumstances in your life that have come up recently and they've worried you and they've uh, been of great concern to you. And you've been crying out to God, Lord, how are we going to get out of this? We have situations like that sometimes in our lives, don't we? Well, friends, let me tell you tonight that the Lord will bring you out. If you cry unto him, he will help you. Friends, in prayer, sometimes you have to test the waters, the waters of faith. What's your faith like tonight? Is it strong in the Lord? Do you believe in prayer even? You say, yes, I've had some prayer times with God and he's uh, uh, appeared. Well, good. You've got encouragement then. And uh, the Lord's building up some layers of faith in your heart. When you have answers to prayer, there is a sense that the Lord is building up layers of faith because you begin to believe and those beliefs get stronger and stronger and stronger. And when we get really strong faith and we hit some really bad times, then sometimes our faith becomes very strong. Although we may feel absolutely weak and we don't know what to do with the situation, and yet the Lord knows. You see, it's out of much weakness. But you see, prayer is the ultimate blessing in our lives when we're in trouble. I've known it time and time again, where we've committed a situation to the Lord, especially in church life as well, where the church, where the church may have been in uproar over a situation or something, but God has de dealt with the problem through prayer and supplication. God will deal with every problem in the church as well. And any enemies that come out against you, he will deal with them. Friends, we don't have to fight our own battles. All we have to do is go down on our knees and cry. And sometimes that might be a battle cry. But we have to cry. In crying there's humbleness, isn't there, before God. When we, when we cry, we're at our lowest estate, aren't we? Unless it's tears of joy. But uh, if we get to that point where we've come to the end and we have to cry over something. See, the Lord sees all our tears. He sees everything about us. See, we tend, we tend to think God is way in, in the distance, and, but actually, he's actually living with you internally. So he's very close to you. The host, Holy Spirit lives internally inside of you. So the Lord's close to you at all times. Just remember that. That's a great blessing to know that he's living inside of you. And he's directing you and guiding you. The Lord will direct you and guide you in the problems that you have facing you in the coming weeks. He'll help you. You say, well, you're full of faith tonight. What's the matter with you? Well, friends, I believe in the true and living God that he appears in every situation because we've seen him do it and uh, we've seen him appear in the most difficult of circumstances. But you see, the Lord will appear. Take comfort from that tonight. You may say to me, well, I haven't quite got the faith uh, that you've got. Well, when you get into the midst of the problem and you see the Lord answering the prayers, you'll be beginning to build your faith and you'll begin, begin to understand that the Lord is with you. To know that the Lord is with you, you've got everything. See, money can't do it. Money can't get over the problems. Money can get over certain kinds of problems. But you see, money won't get over every problem. The Lord wants you to know and understand that he's the master. Is the Lord your master? Or do you go off in your own tangents, in your own ways? No, friends, we need the Lord to be our master. 
when we've got a master over us, we know he's the boss, right? Wonderful thing to have Jesus as our master. It's a wonderful thing to know that he is the master of all things. You may say, well, God just doesn't seem to help me. I can't, just can't see my way forward in this situation that I'm in. Well, perhaps God's teaching you that you have to get to the water's edge before uh, the Lord will uh, work. You remember the children of Israel when they got to the Red Sea. There didn't seem, did there, any hope that they was going to get through the situation. But the Lord uh, parted the waters. And what happened? The enemies were, 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 were dealt with, weren't they? And they went through on dry land. And you'll find, perhaps, when you get into your situation, there'll be nothing right until the very moment that you need something to be done. And then the Lord will provide a way through. The Lord provides for every storm. Remember that word that I spoke this morning, Behold, I will send an angel before you. Blessed word that is. You see in this uh, dear, uh, dear David here, he knew what it was to cry unto the Lord. And uh, he, he said, didn't he, strangers have come up against me. You might have had some tr strangers that have suddenly done something bad to you in some kind of way. They've risen up against you. Oppressors seek after my soul. Yeah, they want to see the fall of you. That's what they want to see. But friend, let me tell you tonight, they won't see the fall of you because the Lord's going to be the master and he'll appear for you in the situation when you get there. Make no mistake about it. Sometimes the Lord wants us to go through these difficult pathways in life that we have to go through for teaching. Why? To trust the Saviour. That's what it's all about. Where's your trust tonight? He's a good God. Behold, God is my helper. David had learned that, didn't he? He learned that when Goliath came out against him and he had great difficulty, didn't he? And all he had to do was go down and fight Goliath and trust the Lord, wasn't he? You see, he'd already learned the pathway of enemies coming out against him and the Lord appearing. And that great giant uh, on that day uh, fell to the ground, didn't he? And David was able to deal with that man that came out against him. Everybody else was scared of him and uh, frightened of him, but uh, not David. David went forth, didn't he, with those uh, stones and that sling. And the Lord directed the stones, didn't he? By the power of the Holy Spirit, they were directed into his forehead. So David knew this great God, you see. When he says here, behold, God is my helper, he already knows that God is his helper. The Lord is with them that uphold my soul. He shall reward evil unto mine enemies. He knew that, didn't he, as well. He knew, even in the slain of Goliath, uh, God would reward his him, didn't he, in that sense, to have a victory over his enemies. And he, he cut them off in my truth. You see, it doesn't matter what man does to come out against us sometimes, the Lord will work. When I was um, greatly blessed under the Spirit of God, um, I knew much blessing. And uh, it was just before I was baptised and uh, I was working on a building site and the men on that building site, they came out against me because I was a believer in Jesus. i never forget the day. This man, his name was Ian and he was an electrician 
and uh, he came out against me and he swore me to the ground, saying what an evil man I was to believe in such a God. His swear words and his language that came out of his mouth was absolutely disgusting and I couldn't even repeat it to you tonight, but I've never forgotten it. When those words were spoken to me, I literally looked up to heaven. What happened to the sky? It was a bright blue day. And God turned the sky to blackness and a storm came. And the thunder and the lightning came. I didn't think too much of it. But you see, I knew that the Lord was going to have vengeance against my enemies. I didn't know how he was going to do it. And I didn't know what was going to happen. But through the sky changing from a bright, bright blue sky, and I felt to be in my own soul's experience on the very gates of heaven. And yet, in that moment of time, I was persecuted to death. Some weeks later, I got home late from work and my wife very kindly got my dinner as she always does, lays it on the table and she gave me a newspaper. And I was just going through the newspaper as I was eating. And what did I find to my horror? Ian, the electrician, had died under a cupboard. The wires that he, were work, he was working on, they flipped over and connected onto his body and he couldn't get out of the cupboard because it was so small and he was a big bloke and he was trapped and the electricity killed him. So the Lord does have vengeance on enemies in our lives that come out against us. I proved it, friends. I was absolutely flabbergasted when I read this article. And the next morning I phoned one of the other electricians up to uh, um, see if the news in the newspaper was true. And I said, is it right that Ian's died? He said, yes, Mark. He said the electrical cable locked onto him and killed him and he couldn't escape. You see, that man's in hell today. Friends, we're dealing with a God that we don't even know too much about. But you see, the Lord knew that what he said to me was totally wrong and God had vengeance and friends the Lord will have vengeance on your enemies if you're a child of God and someone comes out against you in some kind of way the Lord will appear for you make no mistake about that what does the Lord say in the Bible vengeance is mine we need to be very careful how we carry on in our lives because we have a God that is a just God. He shall reward evil unto mine enemies. You see, the, the Lord done that to Ian on that day. He rewarded that man with the evil that he spoke to me. And he cut him off. Terrible, isn't it, friends, really? It makes me shudder to this day. It happened to me when I was in my early 20s. And it's as strong today as I stand in this pulpit today as it was then. You see, God is a just God and he will deal with every situation which we come into. See, I didn't have to raise a finger. I didn't have to speak a word. Sometimes, if we're crossed, sometimes we speak out a load of stuff. Beware of doing that because you can get yourself in more trouble. Sometimes it's best to stay quiet and in the Lord and just look up. That's all I did that day, just stood still and looked up. 
and the God of heaven appeared. I will freely sacrifice unto thee. I will praise thy name, O Lord, for it is good. The Lord's people know what it is to freely sacrifice. And they know what it is to praise his holy name. For he is good. Can you say Jesus is good to you even tonight? Do you have those evidences uh, of faith that uh, you can say, yes, truly Jesus is good unto me? See, the Lord will appear in every situation for his people. And in that sense, we don't have to worry about our circumstance that we may have. David didn't have to worry about his circumstance here with his enemies, did he? I will praise thy name, O Lord, for it is good. For he hath delivered me out of all trouble, and mine eye hath seen his desire upon my enemies. See, the Lord is great in, in his deliverances for his Lord, for these people. It's, a, it's an amazing thing, uh, seeing the Lord's deliverance in our own lives. When we have these great mountains and these great enemies that come up against us in our lives, and we see uh, the delivering hand of God in all the trouble. You may be in some serious trouble tonight, that no one knows about. You've kept, perhaps kept it to yourself, and, and you have uh, laid it before the Lord. You see, that shows that you have that trust in him, and uh, you are not too worried about the outcome in that sense. You see, it's having faith to believe and to lay it upon Jesus. See, Jesus done an amazing thing on the cross at Calvary. He took all these woes from us and he dealt with them at the cross. Your life and my life, if we're in the covenant of grace, has been dealt with on the cross at Calvary. And those nails, friends, that were driven through his hands and secured his body uh, to the cross, so will we know that in our own personal life. We will be nailed to a cross of suffering. <coughs> None of us like suffering, do we? We shun suffering, don't we? But you see, when we're the Lord's people, we will go through suffering. We cannot escape suffering. It's impossible. If we're following Jesus, there will be times in our lives where we'll be suffering in some kind of way. You might be suffering deeply in your own life at this present time. But you see, the Lord, as he had those nails put through he was fastened to his suffering wasn't he he couldn't escape it could we and you might not be able to escape your your suffering tonight there might be something in your life that you just can't get rid of but it's it's causing suffering inside those nails have been driven home just like they were in jesus's hands and his feet you're secured to a cross of suffering. You may even feel that tonight, that you're in a, a, a place that you cannot escape. You know that you've been fastened to the cross of suffering. Well, take great comfort tonight, friend. If you feel like that, then you are in the sufferings of Christ. Every believer will go through suffering of some kind. But you see, there is a bright future coming when all suffering will end. 
what a wonderful blessing that will be for each one of us. When those sufferings will be freed and there won't be any more sufferings anymore. The Lord's people have to know suffering. It's part of the pathway of following Jesus. You may say to me tonight, well I thought following Jesus would be a bright situation. And now you're telling me that I'm going to have to go through some suffering. Friends, if we are following Jesus, we will have to go through suffering. There's no escape. You young people here tonight, if you're uh, thinking that um, following Jesus will bring great blessing in your life, and so it will, but there will be a measure of suffering that you have to go through. See, the Lord measures out the suffering. The Lord measures out the suffering for his people. See, the Lord will sustain you through the suffering. He'll help you to get through the suffering, however bad that is. I knew a lady, she was uh, suffered so much with her health and uh, she was in such difficulty with her health constantly, year after year after year. But you see, the Lord sustained her. It was like she had those nails pushed through her hands and her feet and she had to walk in this permanent state of suffering. But you see, the Lord wonderfully appeared and helped her through day by day. How did she get through? Through prayer and supplication. That was the only way forward. And sometimes we might know that in our own lives. Prayer and supplication is the only way forward because we trust in this Jesus to help us through the suffering. When I was uh, young and just come to faith, I thought my life was going to be bright, a bright, bright future with no suffering too much. That's how I thought. But you see, as we've gone on and we've learned more things about Jesus, we've known a pathway of suffering, of deep suffering. My suffering won't be the same as your suffering. But you see, you may have suffered through many things. But the Lord knows all about the suffering. That's the wonderful thing about the Lord's people. They have a God that is caring for them every step of the way. See, God took great care of Jesus on that cross, didn't he? He had to walk on that, through that cross with that cross on his back. He had to walk and he was lashed, wasn't he? But you see, he got through. Why did he get through? Because the Father was looking over him. And he got through. Friends, was that suffering for you? Can you say tonight, yes, the sufferings of Jesus was for me? I've been a terrible sinner. And I've caused uh, my loving saviour to go to the cross. And he's wonderfully gone to the cross for me. And he suffered, bled and died for me. Wonderful, isn't it, when you think that the Lord suffered and bled for such a character as what we are. Or I might need to say what I'm like. It's a wonderful, a wonderful thing to know that the, the Lord has suffered. I remember uh, one sweet time with the Lord and his sufferings. I was out in a foreign country in Austria and I'd gone out there to work for two months. And friends, I entered into the Lord's sufferings. And uh, that lasted all night. But I knew and understand that the Saviour was over me. It's a strange thing in, this, in a foreign land, you can't go for help anywhere. I couldn't speak the language. I was shut, shut up in a mountain hunting lodge uh, for two months. 
there was no one to help in that difficulty, but I, I became very faint and very ill, and I didn't really know how I was going to get home. But I entered into the sufferings of Jesus, and those sufferings, they came when the church clock struck 12 o'clock. I never forget it. And uh, those sufferings uh, that I felt inside, they were terrible sufferings of the mind and of the soul. So you might, you might not have physical problems tonight. You might have some serious things going in the mind where you're suffering. <coughs> terrible thing to suffer in the mind. Deep places the Lord may take us in the suffering of the mind. Friends, I was so weak I could hardly walk. But somehow I got home and after I got home I laid in bed for a week. I couldn't move. See, I knew and understand how the weak saviour, how weak he felt. He literally was so weak in his suffering. We knew and understood that our sins had caused him to walk through that suffering, and we were receiving a little of it. It was only a little of it. You think Jesus saved for the whole eternity the people who are only a little small part of that, that suffering suffering aren't we that the Lord suffered for the whole of mankind that he had saved on the cross anyway friends I'm going to leave it with you it's uh, been good to be with you today and I pray that God will take great care of you as a church and that you will know uh, and see that your enemies will fail over you if, they, if you've got enemies and uh, I pray that God will help you in every direction. And uh, don't fear man. That's one thing I would say to you tonight. Do not fear man. Fear God and lay your, lay your troubles at his feet. Because those blessed feet will help you. But man won't help you. He will come out against you in some other way. And there will be some other difficulty. So don't put your trust in man. We're told in the Bible so clearly not to put our trust in man, but put it in God. Lord, we be with you all. Amen.